Keep your internet access private with private internet access. Get five devices and unlimited data on a single low cost account. Check it out at the link below. What's up guys, CB Mortar here, back with another video, and today we're here with a real kind of different video from our reviews or DIY kind of projects. We're kind of back at it again with a bit of a vlog kind of style video, where we're going ahead and finding out what happens when a power supply explodes. Now I've covered this on a lot of different videos, making sure you buy a good quality power supply so that it doesn't explode, but what happens when a power supply explodes? What part of it explodes? How does it explode? And why does it explode? And that's what we're going to be finding out, hopefully, maybe in this video. Now, the other day, I had a uh, desktop PC that was basically in sleep mode, and it was running newer chipsets, but the sort of internals were also too slightly older. It's a bit of a mangled together kind of PC that served its task just fine, but it didn't really do anything special. Now, this particular system ran an Intel Pentium Anniversary Edition with obviously the correct motherboards and RAMs and all that kind of stuff. However, the power supply, which was the guy over my shoulder is an Antec 900 watt from quite a few years ago. Now this was at a time before well power supplies got a little bit better and also to before the time when they supported the new C states and may have been the reason why it has gone ahead and exploded. But we'll get into why and how it exploded and that kind of stuff. Today we're really just going to find out what happens when a power supply explodes and maybe even find out why it explodes and what you might be able to do to hopefully avoid this as well. So come along as I pull this guy apart and try and figure out where it exploded and why. Right, so today's plan is actually pretty straightforward. I'm gonna take this power supply, we're gonna rip it apart, and um, there's a few steps I'm gonna follow. Step one, get it open. Two, make an assumption as to what's actually gone wrong here. And then three, let the internet correct me and then pin the most accurate comment as to what's gone wrong. Uh, basically exploded, and I have no idea why it's actually gone ahead and exploded. Now, uh, to be fair, this is a 80 plus bronze rated power supply. It is a 900 watt power supply from Antec, just reading off the back sticker uh, here. But basically, um, oh, that smells really bad. Um, essentially, it's a really old power supply. I'll pop up what year it is on the screen here. And basically, it's just old and it could have failed one of two reasons, obviously one being old, but also two uh, for being used in a system that is really not what it's designed for. So um, not exactly a lot of people do know that, that there's actually different states that the power um, that their system actually is in. So I believe they're known as C states, though don't quote me on that one. Uh, but basically when a computer's in hibernation or in sleep mode in today's sort of world is a lot different from what they were back in the days of these older power supplies. So it might have just been the fact that it's newer hardware running in different power state and then, well, this thing went ahead and exploded because it's just not designed for it. So, um, this thing smells really bad like electronic cancer and, um, I think I see an explosion mark, uh, just in the top. I don't know if we're going to see that, but, um, it's really bad. So let's jump over here and go have a look. Okay, so we've gone ahead and jumped over to the desk right here. Um, I've got some basic tools. I've got my screwdriver. Um, a knife in case we need to knife something and um, a plastic pry tool so we can jab things without being electrocuted. Basically, we're just going to go ahead and pull it apart. I think I've had this power supply apart before, but I can't remember. And I've just noticed there's hex bolts here which can't be undone with a screwdriver. So I'm going to go ahead and get my uh, iFixit toolkit, which I probably should have had to begin with. So I did go ahead and grab my iFixit toolkit. It's the super old one and actually funny little story, if you ever see this in future videos, um, the top of it's been sort of sun bleached, so you can kind of see it's like yellowed at the top, and then uh, not yellow at the bottom, if we bring it into the focus section of the camera, uh, you can kind of see there's, um, it's meant to be that colour, but it's actually that colour anyway, so um, that's my iFixit toolkit, I probably should get a new one, maybe, if there's someone at iFixit, I would love to get a new one, um, anyway. So yeah, um, I did also to plan to bring my multimeter over so we could test and jab little different bits. It's uh, The battery in it is flat and it's Sunday afternoon and every shop is closed and I can't get a spare battery and I want to shoot the video today. So we're not going to have a multimeter. We're going to be unprofessional um, in that way. So first things first is to get this bit off, which I believe I actually have pulled apart this power supply before. I don't know when or why, um, but I think I did. Um, and this power supply was actually one that I bought, 
I think this was my first power supply, um, like a, a, an aftermarket one. I, I had bought OEM replacements for like Dell machines uh, prior to this, but I think um, if I, I'm, I'm pretty sure that this is sort of like the first enthusiast level power supply that I bought. So a little Antec one, um, again, 900 watt power supply. It is kind of super dusty in there. And this bit from memory lifts off. There we go. That's interesting. So we got those two bits off and then I guess the fan comes out with the rest of it. Uh, so we can put that aside. Just chuck that there and grab this guy. So um, I wasn't actually home when this thing exploded. Um, I was out and I came back and the house smelled like, um, if you imagine burnt electronics times it by a million, this thing is so bad. And even just sort of moving it around here, um, it still smells bad. And you know what? We're going to take our knife and we're going to just chop these cables off because it's going to be an absolute pain trying to uh, deal with that. And my blades just come loose. I bought this blade because it looked cool, but I cannot use it for the life of me. Oh, finally. Actually, kind of looks really cool, like one of those undersea fiber cable thingies. Um, anyway, the point of chopping that off was one, to make it easier for me to move around now, but also two, so no one else can ever use this power supply again. And also two, to recycle uh, these wires. So the actual wiring of one of these power supplies isn't too bad. I believe this is copper core. Um, let's pull one out and have a look. Uh, it does look like copper, but it might just be plated. Uh, no, I think it is silver. Yeah, it's just silver cabling, but it's still decent gauge nevertheless. So, um, what I usually use these for is like uh, DIY little connectors I might throw together, um, uh, LED strips and those kind of things. So, it's really handy to have all these things. And you know, you've got 24 pins, you got eight plus eight pins, you got a ton of different things here. So uh, literally you could spend, I think to the tune of like $200 to get a similar amount of cables off this or just one dead power supply. So um, I really do like salvaging these and you can also to repurpose the connectors. So I've um, a couple times been sleeving power supplies and I've uh, busted off the uh, end terminal. So it's really handy to have like a bucket of terminals, uh, whether you want to, you know, turn some Molex cables into some SATA cables or so on. So um, yeah, really handy to have them aside. I'll just put them over there, right out of uh, the shot. We can trim off those guys. So um, yeah, I mean, that's sort of the chopping of a non-modular power supply, uh, which is really interesting. If you are gonna be sleeving a non-modular power supply, there's something I always recommend is to uh, cut the housing because this just blows out. But anyway, that's not the point of this video. The point of this video is to try and get this thing apart. I think there's a screw under there and uh, see what has actually exploded on this thing. Actually, now that I've just broken the warranty void sticker, I don't think I've actually opened this thing much more than take off the top fan thing, uh, which is a bit concerning. Uh, looks like this just lifts straight off. There we go, so... Oh, yes, I see what has blown up. If we can... Uh, See that right there, that's a bit of an indication of what might be to come. That's just blown out real big. Oh yeah. What part is that? Right, so upon closer inspection, it does look like these little um, capacitors in this section right here has gone ahead and actually exploded. I've checked the other side, and whilst it does show kind of signs of being scorched and gotten very, very hot, it doesn't actually look like the other side is to blame. It looks like these little capacitors right here, I should be probably pointing with my plastic tool, uh, but these guys are all just crunch city uh, little, I think these are resistors. Whatever's the right thing will be on the screen um, because I'm blown away by how exploded they are and what they've done. So uh, just take a look at this section, there's a lot. So if we look down, I think it's in the camera shot here. So if we look down this section, a lot of the silver is still silver. And then as we move across these uh, resistors, they do get more and more yellowed to the point where they've exploded over on this side. So from my understanding, uh, this is some sort of voltage sensing relay or something to do 
um, with the voltages. I mean, if we look inside the power supply, I mean, you've got all the other bits and pieces, some big capacitors and resistors and twirly whirly things. Um, I'm, I'm not an electrical engineer, so I don't know what exactly they are. But point being, if we look on the other side of this, we can see, uh, if we go like that, uh, that there's this little rubber band thing. Ouch, that is sharp. Uh, there we go. So if we look here, we do see this little rubber thing that was meant to hold these, uh, ooh, these are resistors together. Uh, and these resistors are now sort of flopping around. But it does look like this part of the board has been... Uh, has been the actual failure itself and uh, especially here it's burnt the underside of this guy we have a look in there sizzled that guy up real bad and um, that's probably what the smell is is the smell of exploding uh, resistors and this acrylic -y plastic stuff that's also to basically caught fire um, what kind of what are these guys these are 102 102 they've got they're marked on it 102 so i'm guessing 102 resistors again not an electrical engineer so i have no idea what any of this stuff is or what it does but it is a little riser board a lot of power supplies do have these little up sections i've noticed i haven't pulled too many power supplies apart so uh, yeah okay um so if we look actually inside of this guy the actual cables that go to the pc go straight downwards onto the bottom pcb and then you got this like little add-in card almost, even though it's not on a socket, that does more voltages and stuff. If I have a bit of a look, um, there's no real indication as to what it does, other than it looking pretty crispy. Um, it does have, wow, it smells really bad. It does have some chips on it and some ICs, so um, I would assume this is something to do with uh, voltage sensing power delivery stuff. If we zoom in any more, here we go, and we lift it up to the camera, there we go. We can start to get uh, a really good idea of what went wrong. Let's move the microphone over so you guys can still hear me from here. But if we have a look at that, and that comes into focus, look at that. So we've definitely got some full exploded resistors right there. Um, and it smells super, super bad. And again, we can see that yellowing progression from sort of this bottom section down here. Uh, where it's still silver, to the middle section where it's yellow, to the top where it's exploded again. Um, I don't know what part this thing actually does. Let's look at the underside here. There we go. Explosions and stuffs and dust and everything like that. So that's a bit of a surprise. Honestly speaking though, I was expecting... Oh, that's bad. Um, I was expecting one of these... Uh, uh, capacitors to have exploded, all these things that are wrapped up in the yellow thing. I was expecting more of those to be um, our explosion because it did smell so bad and was, I'm assuming, quite big. So I was expecting something to be larger um, as to our issue right here. But it wasn't. Uh, so that is what has gone down here. A little bit anticlimactic because expecting more out of this and we didn't get any more. Okay, so after I had a bit of a dig around on the internet and having a look at other diagrams and just sort of poking my face down in here and having a look at sort of what this whole section does, again, without my multimedia, multimedia? Multimeter to have a bit of a poke in there, can't exactly say for sure, but it does look like it's some sort of voltage sensing and there's also to the relay and other bits and pieces that make up the circuit to run the fan with some temp sensors that looks like in there. So it does look like it has a lot to do with the uh, control over the power supply, which is making me kind of think that's why it exploded, because this thing's not really designed up for the newer powered systems, so, you know, it, it can't exactly control itself and went ahead and exploded. I also do notice it got so hot it warped uh, the PCB, so it does look like it wasn't just a sudden flash like that and it went ahead and exploded. It does look like it got really, really hot over time and then sort of just fizzled out and then it broke. I don't know if the fuse is actually blown on this thing. Um, I can't find the fuse, to be honest with you guys. So um, I think the fuse is in uh, sort of this section in there. Um, if we zoom in, actually, I think I just found it. So I think the fuse is um, next to this red coil down there inside of a heat shrink. Uh, but I can't tell whether it's blown or whether it is still open. Open, is that the correct term for a corrected, connected? Uh, fuse. Either way, I can't tell if the fuse is blown. Nothing else in the circuit looks blown. Everything looks okay, except for that part, which is a bit of a problem. 
So there we go, we've finally gotten to the conclusion and worked out why our power supply has gone ahead and exploded. It definitely smelled really, really bad and um, I'm not super fond of this power supply thing, I'm just going to chop the cables off, kind of keep the metal inside of them and then uh, chuck the rest in the bin. But um, yeah, kind of an interesting little investigation here. That being said, let me know down in the comment sections if you've had a power supply that's gone bad, whether it's just stopped working or actually exploded like what we got here today. Uh, do let me know down in that comment section. Guys, thanks for watching and I'll catch you all in the next one.